Good evening. This regular meeting of January 13th, 2020 of the Dubuque Community School District Board of Education is called to order. Our mission is to develop world-class learners and citizens of character in a safe and inclusive learning community. Roll call, please. Ms. Bradley? Present. Mr. Donahue? Here. Ms. Parks? Here. Mr. Prohaska? Here. Ms. Ryan? Here. Mr. Sancy? Here. Ms. Whitman? Here. We have with us tonight uh, students from Roosevelt Middle School who will introduce themselves and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Hello, my name is Max Hoden. I am a seventh grader at Roosevelt Middle School and we are from the Roosevelt Student Council. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. Oh, wait. Hi, my name is Gunther Norman, and I'm from Roosevelt, and I'm in sixth grade. Hello, my name is Ron Kay, and I'm in sixth grade from Roosevelt. Hello, my name is Bella Rushka, and I'm a sixth grader at Roosevelt. Hi, my name is Sophia Kazire, and I am a seventh grader at Roosevelt. Hi, my name is Maura Lawler, and I'm a sixth grader at Roosevelt. <laughs> Hello, my name is Ashlyn Freiberger, and I'm a sixth grader at Roosevelt. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I move the Board of Education approve the agenda as submitted. Second. It has been moved and seconded to approve the agenda as submitted. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. I move the Board of Education approve the minutes of the annual organizational meeting on December 9th, 2019 as submitted. Second. It has been moved and seconded that the board approves the minutes of the annual organizational meeting on December 9th, 2019 as submitted. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. And that takes us now to board salutes and we will start off with, we have a board salute for teacher of the year. I'm going to introduce uh, Mr. Kolka, the principal of Hempstead High School. But before we start, uh, Adam uh, Miller is here, as many of you, or as you all know. He was chosen last spring as this year, the 2019-20 Teacher of the Year. So it's just an opportunity for us to, to recognize Adam, Adam one more time publicly. As you've heard me say, Adam's a fantastic teacher, comes from a teaching family, his brother, his father, a lot of teachers uh, in the Miller family. I've been fortunate enough as a parent to also have a, a daughter who had uh, Mr. Miller as a a psychology teacher and uh, uh, has been it worked out really well for her uh, in, in, in college uh, having had that background so he does a fantastic job but to give us a few more details Mr. Kolker from Hempstead High School thank you for honoring Adam tonight Adam has a unique way of connecting to kids um, everybody I talk to about Adam is just a great connector to students Adam also assists with our student government um, so that is a, a large student group uh, planning tons of activities at Hempstead High School. Um, many, many hours that go in behind the scenes on that. Um, so we're very pleased to recognize Adam as the 2019-20 Teacher of the Year. Yeah. <laughs> And other board salutes, Mr. who will start with Mr. Prosca. Sure. Uh, I've got a couple here. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge the parents, teachers, and uh, Vicki Sullivan. Uh, 
at uh, Prescott Elementary School for putting on a very fine soup luncheon <coughs> and their fundraiser talent show. It was really great. Uh, I also like to recognize uh, Shana Boxleiter for inviting us to the uh, coding class at Jefferson. Uh, shows the kids how they're learning coding in uh, middle school. I, I also had a chance to stay for their circle, their little uh, ad, uh, advisor advisory group where they uh, deal with uh, emotions, feelings, etc. And it was very interesting. Likewise, I'd like to also mention I attended the Hempstead Senior Doubleheader basketball. It was a great game, uh, both uh, girls game and uh, boys game. A great crowd. Sportsmanship by both teams was uh, terrific. It's a very impressive to see when, when the uh, schools play their school fight song that the entire student body stands up and I'm glad they, that our leaders and coaches and sponsors, they advocate this sportsmanship for our students. So it's very good. And just a quick uh, commercial. Round two is this Friday. Weather <laughs> permitting. Round two is this Friday. So uh, senior and him still be playing each other again this time at senior. So hopefully another good crowd, a, a lot of participation. We'll hope the weather holds out as well. Okay. Special privilege for me to offer a board salute to Table Mound for its mock convention. Uh, Table Mound was built in 1960 and it closed nine one-room country schools and has grown to be quite a large elementary school now. But not, since 1968, they have uh, offered every four years a mock convention so that students understand the political process, democracy in action by being in action with it. And so it was just delightful to be back there as a member of the school board. Uh, Idaho was represented by the Dubuque Community School District Board of Education. Mr. Prohaska was there to cheer on Idaho, eat more potatoes. <laughs> 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 but the students researched the platforms and the candidates and the process, and then they're involved directly in it. It's always the party that's chosen is always the one that's not the incumbency party. So this year it was representing the Democratic candidates and the students did a phenomenal job of being the political process. And I talked with one mother uh, during the, one of the breaks in the process and she said, Kyle can't quit talking about this. He knows so much more about democracy at this point in, in our, our uh, process than I ever did, and he said he keeps. She said he keeps wanting me to say who I'm going to vote for. I realize I have to know more before <laughs> I'm going to. So it really is about good citizenship. It's about promoting the democratic process while being in action, and it's a tremendous amount of work. I was principal there for 11 years, participated in three of these. It's a tremendous amount of work, but I can't imagine anything better for students to really get to participate in democracy. So, bravo to everyone at Table Mound who was involved. Great. Well, one, uh, just give a big kudos to all of the teachers and paraprofessionals who uh, participated in a social and emotional training, I believe, in uh, 2019. A variety of teachers came together and worked with Antonio Mozan, and uh, he's a staff from the University of Dubuque, um, just really focusing on how do you understand yourself and understand how to regulate your emotions mm -hmm. and helping students to figure out how to do that as well. And it seems like last year we were all in a group as a board talking about how important it is for us to understand how to infuse social and emotional into our curriculum, into our school system, and right away our, our teachers are, are doing that. So it's, it's amazing just to see the teachers listening and also just infusing that. So to all the teachers who participated in that, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm excited to announce the board salute for our aquatic center. It is finished. Um, we'd like to give a big um, congratulations to Bill Burkhardt, Charlie Clausen, and the buildings and grounds team members who worked tirelessly to prepare the new aquatic center for the state inspection. The team worked hard to make sure every detail was attended to with no surprises and the facility passed with flying colors. So this Saturday there is going to be the dedication at the aquatic center at 10 a.m. followed by the Boys City Meet at noon. There'll be no admission charge for the meet, and we would look forward to showing this as outstanding facility to the community. So please attend if you have an opportunity. If you can't come on Saturday, please try to come to some swim meet or just come see the new facility. It's amazing. We're really proud of it. Great. Thank you.
Okay, that takes us to visitors and open forum. On behalf of the school board, uh, my fellow school board members, at this time I would like to invite any member of the audience to step forward to the microphone with comments about items of interest or concern. Please begin by stating your name and address. It would be appreciated if you would limit your comments to three minutes so that we can keep the meeting moving in a timely fashion and allow others an opportunity to speak. The board's role is to listen to your comments but a response and or action will not be forthcoming if the topic is not an agenda item. If you have thoughts to share about items that are included as topics for tonight's meeting, we would invite these comments at this time also. Thank you for your support of our school district. I would like to move the Board of Education suspend the rules of order and go into open form. Second. It has been moved and seconded that, let me find my notes here, to approve <laughs> To suspend the rules of order and go into open forum. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Good evening. My name is Tammy Deere. I live at 2139 Clark Drive. I'm back for Spotlight on Our Schools. So I'm so excited to tell you that Nancy, I hope you didn't steal too much of their thunder. Uh -oh. We have some friends and colleagues from Table Mound who are going to come up and talk about the mock convention. So please welcome them and we're excited to hear what they have to say. Good evening, my name is Matthew Hall, 260 Julian Dubuque Drive, or 100 Tower Drive is where Table go. Mound is located. So wherever you wanna find me, I'm either in one of those two places. Um, and just wanted to share a little bit about uh, the Table Mound Mott Convention, uh, taking place every four years since 1968. Um, so it was our 14th Mott Convention, uh, and Nancy uh, alluded to a little bit of what it's about. And I just wanted to reiterate the uh, massive amount of work that went into it, um, not just by staff, but primarily by the students who uh, did all of the work in getting it ready, writing speeches, uh, researching candidates, uh, researching states, uh, researching the process, uh, and then actually fulfilling the roles uh, at the actual convention. It was, you. I don't think once you heard an adult voice uh, over the course of four to five hours of the convention. It was student voices, student led. We had uh, kind of an informal paparazzi, uh, students that were taking pictures, <laughs> video. Uh, I think we ended up with about 2,500 uh, pictures uh, and video to sift through. Uh, so it was uh, a tremendous event. It was my first one. And I think uh, when we do these kinds of things, we wonder, well, does it make an impact? You know, we talked about Kyle, and we wonder, well, does it matter? Uh, we had a third grade student named Elle who uh, her class researched Tennessee. That was one of the states and uh, her parents uh, thanked us because now they have their next vacation plan. <laughs> uh, they're clearly going to Tennessee now because she was so excited. Uh, one of the candidates that they researched was Elizabeth Warren and she was so taken and interested in Elizabeth Warren that she convinced her family uh, to go to one of her rallies that was just held uh, in Manchester. Uh, when they got there, uh, Elle submitted a question and Via Lottery got selected to ask the question to Elizabeth Warren, Warren at the rally. So there's a great video of Elle on Facebook uh, of her with the microphone asking uh, Elizabeth Warren the question. Afterwards, she got to meet her, had a great photo opportunity, of course, and got some autographed uh, of things to take home. Um, so does it make an impact and, and does it matter? I think it does. Um, I've had several other families who have told me, well, thanks, now we have to go to Alaska. <laughs> or, uh, <laughs> you know, and, and really examine our own uh, participation in the process of democracy and how it works. Uh, the other great piece is that we were able to uh, combine it with our uh, tasks and district assessments in the Iowa standards and it all really worked together so it was really authentic um, you know experiential learning that took place so uh, if you are interested uh, it's only four more years and then you can come back and see it again uh, if you are needing potatoes Nancy Bradley would be the one to talk to and um, 
it was just a really great event. I have some staff here were, who are kind of spearhead, spearheading the effort, and uh, we look forward to hosting it again. So thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Marilyn Roth. I live at 3469 Keymont Drive. And we're here, I think, for an age-old problem. Um, I sent you each an email regarding the problem of the Hempstead students now parking in our neighborhood. Um, unfortunately, and I'm not going to go through my four-page email, and I apologize for that, but I really wanted to get all the facts together because we've been going back and forth with the city council and the school and trying to um, be good neighbors and work out a plan. Um, but I think... Unfortunately, um, and I don't know that my letter did it all justice, but um, I have a group of neighbors here with me tonight, very concerned. Um, we built in this area because we're on two dead end cul-de-sacs, very little traffic. Um, we're a more senior population, I would say. So, um, you know, as driving, as you get older, um, this, this is a good place to live in a quiet neighborhood. Um, but we've had a lot of things happen, and just another incident last week that actually involved my husband. He came down Keyway, was going to turn onto Keymont, and there's a student parked literally in the middle of the street sideways, dropping some kids off. So not only do they park in our neighborhood, kids come down and pick them up and give them a ride to school. And I guess our biggest concern is, and, and we've worked with the city, we did get no parking on mm -hmm. one side, which should have been there from the beginning. They realized that and got that done. But we still have seven or eight cars parking on the street. And our biggest concern is now with the winter and today, not a lot of snow, but the snow's plowed. The kids are parking beside the snow banks. And now it's one lane in and out of our neighborhood again. So these things happen. And, and when we tried to talk to the students and, um, you know, just ask them politely not to park in our neighborhood, what happens <laughs> is they retaliate. And I realize it's not the whole group of students, but there are three or four. We can pretty much name them and tell you what their vehicles are. But they really, um, you know, they've left black marks in driveways. They've put obscene words on their cars and parked it facing our houses. Um, left litter all over. And um, really speed up and down and around our cul-de-sacs and back out. So it's gotten to be very, very disruptive. I mean, we even have neighbors pulling out and parking their cars outside their house so that no one parks in front of their house. And, you know, totally just uncalled for. So we've had a lot of things happen. You know, I, like I said, the no parking on one side of the street has helped. Um, we originally got turned down for the residential parking just because we didn't meet the 70% criteria. And um, we think now that there's no parking on one side, we may be able to meet that sooner or later. But in the meantime, the disruption starts all over again. And I, I don't see it being fixed. We've asked the school many times. We've talked to the assistant principal's office many times. Um, they're very much frustrated like we are and because the parking lot they rent on Pennsylvania for the kids to park in, free of charge, I might add, has six cars in it a day. We track it. We have all the numbers. We have one of the neighbors tracks all the numbers, how many cars are there, how many are in the lot. Um, I've driven through the Hempstead parking lot several times, both, both before and after the construction of the pool, which we realized took up several parking spaces. There's over 50 empty spaces, and they say the spaces are oversold that because kids come and go and they're not there all the time. But you know what? It, it, um, it just doesn't seem possible. And the kids we talk to basically just don't want to pay to park up there well then go park in the church lot and they don't want to do that either because they say it's hard to get in and out and you know we know that it's Pennsylvania it's very busy especially when school's going on so um, I don't know we just wanted to make you aware that the problem is still there I know this has happened in like five different neighborhoods I've talked to several of those people um, they were all lucky enough to get the residential parking although not on the first try and now the rules are we can only apply every quarter so um, I will say the city council has been very, very um, cooperative and, you know, we're still working with them, but um, we just wanted to make this, bring this to your attention and make you aware of what's going on. And we just feel like it's just really kind of in the ruination of a nice, quiet neighborhood. And the distance actually from where they're parking is the same distance as if they parked in the church lot. So Thank you. there you have it. Thank you.
Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Tom Wittry. I live at uh, 1200 Cortez Drive here in Dubuque. Uh, I want to thank uh, Mr. Rankin for, and the board for giving me an opportunity to come in and talk for a couple minutes on something that's very dear to my heart, and that's the, uh, that's the Miracle League of Dubuque. This, uh, this project is built for a population that basically is limited in this area, and we have found through our studies that there's over 10,000 uh, students that are available in the area and, and adults. And what this uh, facility is uh, capable of doing is basically providing any kind of uh, physical activity from kids from 2 to 82. They can come in and walk campus. They can come in and be able to sit down and, and have, a, uh, you know, have a birthday party or whatever they want to. Uh, there's a million-dollar school, or I should say a, a building over there that has two <coughs> classrooms in it. It's got quiet rooms. Everything is ADA, uh, ADA uh, uh, the requirements have been met. That's what I'm trying to say there. I want to uh, I want to just say the real proudness comes I think from what has happened with when we went out and start kicking tires as far as trying to earn money. We were looking for 3.5 million and we're about four million, or about a hundred within a hundred thousand of that. So uh, it's just been a great ride as far as getting people to get into this, because what we're really trying to strive for is the word relationship. And it's time that we get a, a chance to go in and work with some of these kids. And I've been to the schools, I've talked to the different organizations, service clubs, where they can come on out and, and work with these kids. They call them field angels. So if I can't, you know, if I can't bat because of whatever my disability is, what they'll do is go up and get their hands and they'll hit the ball then and that field angel will walk them down to first base or however they can get down there. And that's how they get around the bases. They'll be uh, we aren't sure yet how many teams, but as far as the what's going to be happening here is the city is going to take care of the park really park uh, commission is going to take care of, of scheduling and getting the names out there for teams to sign up for. And I think one of the things as I go back to, and I've been involved with a lot of things right. I've had a students when I was coaching baseball at Hempstead, where I'd had him come on out, and uh, his disability was basically just. He wasn't able to control his, his, his actions. And so that was one of the things we had to deal with. But I want to say the proudness that I had are how the kids on the baseball team on, took ownership of that. When he came down in the field, they played catch with him. They, they pitched to him so he could hit the ball. And it's just one of those things that we're expecting that to this to be a heck of an economic uh, venture for Dubuque. And again, uh, it's one of those things that we have had a great board, and Bill is certainly on top of that. Uh, he has done an awful lot for us in, in the bidding and, and talking to the city council and trying to keep everything in check as to what we can afford. And so again, my heart goes out to him and the desire that he's had and he's put into this project. And, I, and, and one of the other things too that I'll be, I'm very happy to say is uh, our Optimus team. Out in left field for these kids, there'll be a jumbotron where these kids, when they come up to bat, they'll be on that jumbotron. And we're also, they gave us another $2,000 for a camera so that people can go on out there and they can, they can put the camera on them and they can watch them go around the field. And then they can go to the parents. And you want to see some smiles? You want to see some tears? You're gonna. It's what it's all about. And I'm here to just tell you that we are so happy with what's happened. We got a half a million dollars from the city, or from the state of Iowa, because of the economic grant. And Mr. Ronigan was on top of that. He was able to get, go ahead and write letters. Uh, Dwayne Frick, uh, uh, Dick Whites were able to send letters along with probably, I think we had about 150. We went down there to five meetings, and they were as excited about what we were doing for the state of Iowa as we were. And that takes a heck of a lot when it comes to somebody getting more excited about this than I am. <laughs> because it's been a dream come true. And all you have to do is just drive up and see what's going on there. Because of the rain, we weren't able to get it done. I was at a meeting today at noon, and Portson, who's been doing it all this for us, has got it all scheduled out as to we hope to have this thing done by either, and correct me if I'm wrong, Bill, either March, April, or May. But we're going to be on that thing this year. So you teachers that are out there, if you want to take on the, the janitors, 
you got yourself a diamond to do. Right? So uh, anyway, I thank you for just giving this out, putting it in your ear, and how can you help us? By people that you know, that this is going to be one of the greatest things in the state of Iowa. And they've told us that from Des Moines. We've got exactly what our board wanted. We've got, we've got uh, the, the playground equipment. Uh, we have three physical therapists that have been on there that picked it out. And so, and the board just met the other day and we, they came up with enough mon money now to put in two more field equipment devices. Hmm. So we're filling it in. We're gonna have places where you can come and have a picnic. And the, 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 the building down there, if you wanna have a private meeting, if you wanna have a, a graduation program, go through the city and you can do that. This is gonna be the greatest thing that we can all be proud of because it's the first time that anything like this has been done for kids with special needs. And that population is gonna learn from it. I promise that. And for any of you who wanna be field angels, and you wanna come on down and you wanna work with some of those kids, you're gonna learn something too. They wanna to be just like us. And God didn't make no jump. Any questions? Kickoffs itself. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Great presentation. Thank we're, you. We're ever short of coach, so we'll be in a motivational speech. <laughs> well, we'll call you the game. Well, anyway, thank you so much for letting me come in. Uh, I can't wait for you to see it. And uh, yeah. Let us know when the games are going to start. If you you will. It's going to all start getting now in the paper. Uh, okay. They've started sending out names to kids, um, and and uh, uh, they'll have they'll be able to have a shirt, a hat a trophy, and a medal. So, God, I am revved up about this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Anyone else wishing to address the board at this time can come forward. Sure. <clears throat> Hi, my name is Alan Ernst, 1845 Keymont Court. I don't have notes like she does. I shoot from the hip, but of course, I'm limping after last night's game, but uh, <laughs> I think a solution that could, we could come up with, I have felt through the years seeing these kids, I mean, we seem like we're kind of punishing them with driving, that where they're making them walk. Like, you look at senior, how far back they have to park and walk up to a place. Hem says the same way. Well, it's not quite that way. Why can't we just, on their property, build a parking ramp for them? I think it'd be so much easier for them. You know, if you like, it's our charge and parking out there. You could probably get your money back from that there, you know, from that there. But I think the easiest solution for that would be to build a parking ramp on that land that they have. And if you look at senior, they got the room. Wallet sure does, and Hempstead sure does too. It's not like you have to purchase more land to do it. You know, I just feel like you're, you're punishing the kids to making them walk that far. And the reason why they get kind of irate is because they have to walk that far and everything else. You know, I think it's a privilege that they're getting their license because I've always felt that way when I got mine. You know. So I feel like you're kind of punishing them to make them walk that far when you can just build up from right that there. So that's all I got to say. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. <laughs> well, I wear purple at my house. It wasn't any better for us. <laughs> Anybody else wishing to address the board? <laughs> I move the Board of Education reinstate the rules of order and return to regular session. Second. It has been moved and seconded that the Board of Education reinstate the rules of order and return to regular session. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. I move the Board of Education approve those items listed on the consent agenda. Second. It has been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve those items listed on the consent agenda. Agenda. Are there any items any members wish to have removed? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. And that takes us to facilities support services, Mr. Donahue. Okay. Good evening. Um, we met a week ago. A uh, number of things we looked at um, was mentioned earlier was the pool, and again, kudos to Bill and Charlie and all of our contractors. We um, we had a nine and a little, um, just shy of $9.6 million budget for the pool. And if you remember, we had that big hole that was leaking water. Um, we, thanks to the collaboration between uh, our buildings and grounds and the contractor, 
Uh, we were able actually to construct or reconstruct a shell there that will be uh, used at some point down the road um, and do so at a, obviously a, a significant savings over if we had left that to later uh, while we had a big hole in the wall. But uh, it's great to see that that, that project, um, as Lisa indicated, is, is going to be something we can be very proud of, but also came in under budget, even though we uh, spent some money in, in repurposing that, uh, the old pool space. So um, that's fantastic. But uh, we have a number of summer projects that we also are approving or setting um, uh, some times to review the, the contracts, the plans, and, and the specifications of those. So. Uh, number of motions. The first, um, I move that the Board of Education approve the request to the School Budget Review Committee for modified supplemental amount and supplemental aid uh, for the 2020-2021 dropout prevention program in the amount of $4,810,955 for expenditures necessary to implement the 2020-2021 at-risk and dropout prevention program plans. It has been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve the request for the School Budget Review Committee for modified supplemental amount and supplemental aid for the 2020-2021 Dropout Prevention Program in the amount of $4,810,955 for expenditures necessary to implement the 2020-2021 At-Risk and Dropout Prevention Programs plans. Is there any discussion? I just point out this is just an annual. This is something we do every year. Make sure that we've got the spending authority to be able to execute the, the uh, at-risk and dropout plans. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Uh, the second one, um, I move that the Board of Education approve the allocation of Section 179D deduction to Ports and Construction Inc., Dubuque Plumbing and Heating for the Alternative Learning Center Addition Project. Second. second. It has been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve the allocation of Section 179D deduction to Ports and Construction, Inc., Dubuque Plumbing and Heating for the Alternative Learning Center Addition Project. Is there any discussion? Um, this is just a tax incentive that's available to, to normally to organizations that, that are subject to it. Obviously, the school district is not, and it's common for us to look for opportunities to pass those along to the contractors. So that's what we're doing here. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. All right. Um, this is a summer project that we'll have this, uh, this coming summer, uh, but I move that the Board of Education tentatively approve the plan, specifications, form of contract, and estimate of total cost for the Alta Vista Campus Vocational Technology Building Addition Project and set the date, time, and location as March 2nd, 2020 at 4.30 p.m or immediately following the Facility Support Services meeting at the Dubuque Community School District, 2300 Cheney Road, Dubuque, Iowa, for a hearing thereon and further authorize the advertisement for competitive bids. Second. It has been moved and seconded that the Board of Education tentatively approve the plan specification form of contract and estimate of total cost for the Alta Vista Campus Vocational Technology Building addition project and set the date, time, and location as March 2nd, 2020 at 4.30 p.m or immediately following the Facility Support Services meeting at the Dubuque Community School District, 2300 Cheney Road, Dubuque, Iowa, for hearing thereon and further authorization, authorize the advertisement for competitive bids. Is there any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Uh, I move that the Board of Education approve change order number two to Tricon General Construction, Inc. on the form Boardroom Technology Upgrades Project in the increased amount of $2,768.46. Second. It has been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve change order number two to Tricon General Construction, Inc. on the Forum Board Room Technology Upgrades Project in the increased amount of $2,768.46. Is there any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Um, another summer project. I move that the Board of Education tentatively approve the plan, specifications, former contract, and estimate of total cost for the Hempstead High School parking lot expansion project and set the date, time, and location as March 9, 2020 at 5.30 p.m. at the Dubuque Community School District, 2300 Cheney Road, Dubuque, Iowa, for a hearing thereon and further authorize the advertisement for competitive bids. Second. 
It has been moved and seconded that the Board of Education tentatively approve the plan, specification, form of contract, and estimate of total cost for the Hempstead High School parking lot expansion project and set the date, time, and location as March 9th, 2020 at 5.30 p.m. at the Dubuque Community School District, 2300 Cheney Road, Dubuque, Iowa, for a hearing thereon and further authorize the advertisement for competitive bids. Is there any discussion? I'd just like to chime in. I know this is not... We weren't supposed to mention anything during open forum, uh, but uh, it just does show us that we are doing something uh, to alleviate the problem as far as we can. And uh, although it's costly per spot, it's still showing that we're moving in that direction. If, if, if I could, um, you may remember this is the project that circled back around. Right. Our intent was to do it last fall, is to mm -hmm. add about 45 spots up near where the the uh, sculpture is when you enter Hempstead, and then also the original design called for some parking around the, the bus ramp, uh, or the bus turnaround. I don't remember the number of spots there, Bill. Do you remember that roughly? Um, that part of the plan is not because it required by zone uh, a building of a retention pond in front of the high school, which of course is costly and maybe not what you want in front of your high school. So we're, we're bringing it back just for the top piece. So um, just for the, the folks who were here earlier today, I, I empathize uh, with, with, the, with their concerns. Uh, we have added 92 spots back uh, in, the, in the last couple of weeks since the pool was done. Uh, this will bring about 45 spots uh, in. Uh, we also have, I think it's 24 or 25 seniors who are graduating at semester, so those spots will be turned around um, here in the next week or so. So we are looking for opportunities to add parking as we can. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Uh, and I move the Board of Education approve the resolution offering for sale by public bid stage ride Z800 coral and band risers and set the date, time, and place for possible public hearings February 10th, 2020 at 5.30 p.m. at the Dubuque Community School District. Second. It has been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve the resolution offering for sale by public bid stage right Z800 coral and band risers and set the date, time, and place for possible public hearing as February 10th, 2020 at 5.30 p.m. at the Dubuque Community School District. Is there any discussion? I think it's the second, second swing at selling <laughs> risers, um, yep. so we'll keep your fingers crossed. And get All those... All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Um, and lastly, we've got the quarterly budget report, so I'll put it on the table for discussion to have Mr. Keller present it. I move that the Board of Education approve the quarterly budget report. I need a second. 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 It has been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve the quarterly budget report discussion. Mr. Kelleher. Uh, good evening, board members and Superintendent Bratton. There's only a couple things I want to bring your attention to this quarter. Um, in the page 77 of your handout, I'm looking at the debt service revenue uh, for the year. You see that it is substantially higher than what's budgeted. It's 180% of what had been budgeted. The reason for that is because we recently sold bonds to pay off our 2012 and 2013, so that revenue which was not factored into this original budget. And then corresponding to that on page 79, you will also see some expenditures in the debt service fund being over budgeted, and again, that's because we paid off those bonds. We did not put those, uh, expect to do that, went back when we had budgeted this originally. So those are new expenditures to this, and that's the reason it's uh, over budget. Any questions on that? All right, thank you. Okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. All right, thank you, Mr. Donahue. Ed programs, Mr. Sancy. Yes, at our Ed meeting, we had uh, our equity director, Todd Sullivan, who stopped by to give us an update. He's been with the district for nine months now. And for the viewers who are watching, Taj came from the city of Dubuque. So uh, he provided us with an update on where we're at currently right now in the district related to equity from his perspective and just giving us an idea of how he views equity uh, from an educational uh, standpoint and how he kind of foresees us moving forward as a district related to 
uh, infusing equity throughout all of our district and making sure that we're all using best practice and aligning with one another. So he'll be working with the equity committee, uh, internal staff, and also community members, again, just to see how we can infuse equity just throughout all of our buildings and make sure that we're using best practice. Uh, we had Cindy Steffens, our executive director of uh, elementary education, who came and talked about the new assessment that we're using right now just to measure how kids are doing related to the core. So we had the opportunity to just review some data for uh, grades third through 11 uh, with some of the core standards related to English, language arts, math, and science. And I believe this assessment is taken uh, the spring, and so it was taken last year, and now we'll have some data just to for benchmarking, right, Stan? Correct. So it was taken in April. We received the results late fall, uh, early winter of this year. Uh, the hope is this go around, uh, since it will be computer-based, we'll take the test in April, get the results late April, early May. So much quicker turnaround. So it'll be an interesting year because we'll actually receive data. We've had a void of data from statewide testing for several years, but this year we'll have data uh, twice. So it'll be an interesting opportunity to compare those. Data is taking two years or taking a year apart. We're just getting the data closer together. Uh, and last, we had uh, David Moeller, our educational support leader, who updated the board on the financial literacy course requirements. Uh, so, starting uh, next year, every single student will be required to take a financial uh, literacy uh, course. And if the viewers are watching, uh, last year, the board mentioned that we wanted students to begin to, to take uh, financial literacy just to stay ahead of uh, state, and we truly believe that that's just going to be another tool to prepare our students for the future. I know last year I talked to a variety of kids who wished that they would have took advantage of the financial literacy course. And they said, hey, that's a basic thing that can teach me about savings and finance finances. So we're excited that you know next year everyone will take it, and again, just preparing all the students for the future. Did they get to trade algebra for that, or? No. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was the other request. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, new business. New business. I move the Board of Education approve the 2019 and 2020 board committees as submitted. Second. It has been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve the 2019-2020 board committees as submitted. Is there any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. I move the Board of Education approve the proclamation honoring Martin Luther King Jr. and authorize the President and Secretary to sign on behalf of the Board. Second. <laughs> It has been moved and seconded Way that the Board of Education <laughs> appro approve the proclamation honoring Martin Luther King Jr. and authorize the President and secre Secretary to sign on behalf of the Board. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries and I will read the proclamation. Whereas on Sunday, January 19, 2020, our community will celebrate the birthday of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., beginning with a gathering at Jackson Park at 12.30 p.m. and a march to witness the awards at the annual NAACP Tribute Contest, and whereas on Monday, January 20th, at the, the annual Martin Luther King Jr. birthday breakfast will be held at the Grand River Center at 7.30 a.m. when keynote speaker, Reverend Dr. Soon Cheng Ra, will present a current multicultural reality envisioned by Dr. King. And whereas, in honor of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and the King Center, is urging people to reject all forms of hatred, bigotry, and prejudice, while pledging to do everything in their capacity to make America and the world a place where equality and justice, freedom and peace will grow, grow and flourish, and whereas, we invite all citizens to join in keeping his dream alive by joining in the celebrations, dedicating their lives to creating the community of Dr. King's dream and pledging a nonviolent way of life in their dealings with all people. Now, therefore, I, Tammy Ryan, on behalf of the Dubuque Community School District Board of Education, do hereby proclaim January 19th and 20th, 2020, as days of great celebration in honor of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., signed on this 13th day of January, 2020.
All right. Thank you. Okay, I move the Board of Education take no further disciplinary action related to students number 814272, number 816741, number 814058, and number 814745 at this time. Second. It has been moved and seconded that the Board of Education take no further disciplinary action related to students number 814272, number 816741, number 814058, and number 814745 at this time. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. All right, are there any items? I have one that I'd like to. Yes. On kind of a somber note, uh, I'd like to acknowledge the passing of a former college classmate of mine and friend, and also, more importantly, a teacher and principal uh, here in the Dubuque Community School District. His name was Ted Blanchard. He also became ultimately our human rights, uh, human rights, human resource director, mm -hmm. and uh, he played very many roles in the school district. He'll be missed. He also uh, did a lot of uh, Nonprofit volunteering work for uh, uh, organizations in the community, uh, particularly the Arts Council. Mm -hmm. And he was very, uh, he was always wanted to make sure that when they brought in their musicians, I believe, and their, uh, whoever the uh, Arts Council brought in, that they came to some of our schools and uh, uh, performed for our students. So terribly sorely missed. Oh, and wow. uh, I would just wanted to acknowledge him. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. Thank you very much. We are adjourned.